अनिष्ठोपि दविष्ठोपि तथा अत्यंतमसन्न अति प्रत्यक्षिर्वेनाथ तस्म शब्दात्मने नम फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल ऑन दिस ऑकेजन ऑफ दिवाली एंड विश यू ऑल द बेस्ट गिव यू द सीजन ग्रीटिंग्स एंड ऑल्सो माय बेस्ट विशेष फॉर द न्यू विक्रम इयर प्रोफेसर पी के गोड़े परशुराम कृष्णाजी गोड़े वॉज अ जेम ही वॉज बॉर्न इन एटीन नाइंटी वन एंड वॉज अपॉइंटेड द असिस्टेंट क्यूरेटर ऑफ द भंडारकर ओरियंटल रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूट इन द इयर नाइनटीन एटीन ही रोज टू द पोजिशन ऑफ द क्यूरेटर इन नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी वन He remained in that position for the next forty years until his death. He served the institute for forty-two years, and it is said that in these forty-two years, he had lived less than forty-two days. <clears throat> he died on a Sunday, and that is why, even for his end, he did not seek any leave. professor gode arranged our manuscript library which contains something like 28000 manuscripts today and during his time it contained definitely not less than 22000 manuscripts and he not only arranged the manuscripts library he also studied the manuscripts and he published something like 474 research articles in various journals on various research, research topics based on the manuscripts and books available at the bori and elsewhere professor gode handled a diversity of subjects so he studied the literary history of india he studied sanskrit literature prakrit literature and also literature of the regional languages and on the basis of the manuscripts that he had at his, at his disposal he could actually find bring out so many authors and texts works and a b keith one of the greatest historians of sanskrit literature he said that gode has added a lot to the history of sanskrit literature gode did not leave this city any time for any reason it is said that his son was to be married and that wedding was scheduled at mumbai and gode refused to go there saying that the father of the bride groom has actually no business there so why should he leave his work and go there and he didn't go even in pune he, he did not go beyond the lakdi pul or sambhaji bridge as it is today and if at all he crossed the river from dekkan jimkhana to the uh, old city he would go to only places like bharat itihas samshodak mandal or ananda ashram besides this he also edited something like 10000 pages of various journals and he wrote reviews of dozens of books a commendable scholar indeed and as he has dealt with subjects like rangoli rangoli or jalebi or the nose ornament nath or horse gram or many other food items and tambool a betel nut betel and tambool a betel leaf so has he dealt with various festivals and one of them is of course deepavali so we will try to find what gode has to say on deepavali 
and i'm so i i and i'm sure that you will enjoy this journey gode in his articles on deepavali has actually discussed what exactly it signifies and according to him deepavali signifies the change of season so from monsoon to winter it also signifies harvest of the kharif crop rice particularly and also manuring the soil for the next crop the rabi crop the sun at this time enters or wells uh, uh, in the zodiac sign libra that is tula rashi so he has crossed almost half of the zodiac signs from mesha to tula and these are all actually cultural significances of deepavali and there are also mythological significances attached to deepavali one of them is coronation of lord ram then the second is another coronation of a, a mythical great king named vikramaditya after whom we have the vikrama samvat and obviously as everybody knows deepavali particularly naraka chaturdashi signifies the killing of the demon narakasura by lord krishna historically speaking deepavali is perhaps the oldest festival extant it is the national festival of india it is celebrated in this manner or the other right from kashmir to kanyakumari and from gujarat to uh, arunachal pradesh it is devoted to many deities so you have vishnu there you have lakshmi you have yama and so many other deities they have some role or the other to play in the power and it's a long festival or one of the long festivals so it is at least 3 days at least the 13th tithi of ashwina krishna paksha that is dhanatrayodashi then naraka chaturdashi then amavasya which is the lakshmi pujan a day then it is the beginning of the new vikrama year so bali pratipada which is kartika shuddha pratipada and the next day is actually yama dvitiya that is bhavdis or or bhaiya dooj so these are five days but if actually uh, lakshmi pujan falls on the same day as naraka chaturdashi because uh, it is the question of sunrise and sunset and similarly if bali pratipada and yama dvitiya fall on the same day because again it's a question of sunrise and sunset still it is at least three days and that's why it is one of the longest festivals of india now let us have a look at the calendar of the deepavali which we had last four years and which we are going to have next year so in 2017 deepavali appeared on october 17th and it lasted till october 21st then in 2018 it was in november so november the 5th to 9th and why why this difference of 15 days because in that particular year before ashwina there was an intercalary jeshth month and that is why deepavali shifted for about 15 days next year it returned by 10 days that is last year in 2019 deepavali was between 
October 26th and 29th. And this year, as you know, it has come on November 13th and it will continue till November 16th. Because even, even this year, as you know, there was an intercalary month of Ashwina. Of course, next time again, in the rotation, Deepavali will shift by 10 days and it will fall on November the 3rd and continue till November the 6th. Now, because of this shifting of Deepavali due to the, the intercalary month, if we say that this is a festival of harvest, then harvest is dependent on the cycle of the sun and not on the cycle of the moon. So, sowing of seeds, the Kharif seeds, will be at, on a particular occasion, on the entry of the sun into the Braga constellation. And rice will grow at its own uh, rate. And then if Deepavali appears in October, then perhaps the new crop is not ready at that time. So for the agricultural community particularly, there is a provision of Deva Deepavali or Dev Diwali. And this Dev Diwali falls in the next month. And that is why the Dev Diwali falls on Kartika Amavasya and Margashirsha Shuddha Pratipada. So that is the journey of Deepavali. Friends, we saw that Deepavali is a festival of five days or at least three days. And so, Dhanatrayodashi, the occasion when people worship wealth and particularly our Vaidya friends, the friends who are the doctors or medicants of Ayurveda, they worship their deity, Dhanvantari, because it is supposed to be the Jayanti, the birth date of Dhanvantari, the Lord of Medicine. Now, from Dhanatrayodashi till Yamadvitiya, that is Bhavviz or Bhayaduj, it is five days or at least three days with a day or two which have no festivities in them just like it is it is this year so uh, the the 14th of november that is saturday will have this time uh, naraka chaturdashi as well as uh, lakshmi puja on the same day then sunday will be actually a vacant day and on monday you have balipratipada as well as yamadvitiya so padwa and Bhavis together. So, Dhanatrayodashi and these two days with a Sunday which is vacant, it is altogether four days, but the festivity is on three days. Now, just like this, the Jainas have a very great idea about Deepavali. For them, it is perhaps a festival next to their Paryushana Parva. And Paryushana Parva, as you know, it appears in in Bhadrapada and it is it signifies fasting and then celebration. So next to Paryushana, Paryushana Parva it is Deepavali for them. Why? Because Mahavir attained salvation on Ashwina Amavasya. Let me tell you one thing the Shukla Paksha of any month is the same in the south as well as in the north. But since in the north, the months, they begin at Vadya Pratipada and conclude on Parunima. And in the south, the month opens on Shukla Pratipada or Shuddha Pratipada and ends on Amavasya. So there is a difference of 15 days. So the Shuddha Paksha in both the cases is the same, whereas the Krishna Paksha differs. 
So what we have as Ashwina Krishna Paksha in the south is Kartika Krishna Paksha in the north. And so if you go according to that calendar, then Mahavira's uh, attaining salvation is on Kartika Amavasya. That is, the day is the same, but here it is Kartika Amavasya and here it is Ashwina Amavasya. That's it. That's the only difference. And it was in 527 before Christ that on the day of Ashwina Amavasya for the south or Kartika Amavasya for the north that Bhagavan Mahavir attained salvation. And from that day the Veera Nirvana Sarva Samvat the Veera Nirvana Samvat it began. So the Diwali 2020 in Diwali 2020 we have the beginning of the Veera Nirvana Samvat number 2547 and that is the significance of this day for them. Now there is a good record or evidence or, or documentation of all these things in the Jaina literature and there are also various illustrations particularly in the, in the manuscripts of Kalakacharya Katha and the manuscripts of Kalpasutra which speak about the biography of the Tirthankaras. There are illustrations of uh, these incidents as also there are the illustrations of Diwali celebration. Now for the Jainas, the Naraka Chaturdashi is Kali Chaudas. Kali Chaudas. Lakshmi Poojana is of course Lakshmi Poojana. And Kartika Shuddha Pratipada that is uh, Balip Pratipada. And for them it is the day of opening the new account books particularly for the merchant community and the industrial community. And so there is Bahi Poojan which is celebrated a great deal. So that is how Deepavali is celebrated in various manners and for various purposes. Now we shall go to the history and we shall look at it from the eyes of Professor P. K. Gode, the curator par excellence of the Bandarkar Oriental Research Institute. And we are indeed proud of him and his great work. Professor Gode tells us that Deepavali appears in the Kama Sutra as Yaksharatri. So, Yaksharatri, it is a kind of mysterious night. Of course, it is Amavasya and it is said that Yakshas, they roam around on that particular day or rather or on that particular night. And it is also called as Sukharatri in a text named Neelamatha Puran. Now, Kama Sutra was concluded in around 300 AD or CE and Nilamata Puran was written sometime around 500 CE and in Nilamata Puran it is, it is said that on this particular day Sukha Ratri or it is also called as Sukha Suptika there is celebration everywhere and in order to uh, get rid of the bad omen, there is illumination. So, all round illumination, and there are deeper malas as Nilamata Purana describes. There is a tradition at some places, particularly in the north, that Deepavali, that is Lakshmi Poojana. So, after Lakshmi Poojana, 
people uh, play the game of dice gambling and that has an antiquity of at least 1500 years so this appears in the nilamata puran and then distribution of presents to all is also a part of this celebration we know the name of emperor harshavardhana but we rarely know that he was also an author and he has he has written several uh, and he has several works to his credit one of them is nagananda it is a play and nagananda describes deepavali as the deepa pratipad utsav at sharad samay so it comes in winter and it is the deepa pratipada so it is the first day of the shukla paksha with deepotsava now this word deepotsava appears in a work named yashas tilaka champu and this work champu that means it is a mixture of prose and poetry and it was composed in 959 ce but their deepotsava has got some different dates but the meaning is the same deepotsava for yashastilaka champu it stands on and after kartika shukla navami which is called as the maha navami and it is said that at that time there is a white wash given to all the houses and there is a lot of merry making and people also for fun play the game of dice so it's the same story now as you have the name yaksha ratri it is repeated in what is called as deshi nama mala a lexicon or a kosha of 11th century and the word deepali which is now rather the name of a girl so the word deepali appears for deepavali in another lexicon named trikanda shesha and by the name trikanda shesha it is meant that it is rather an appendix to the greater trikanda lexicon that is amarakosha and amarakosha was written in 4th century uh, ce and trikanda shesha followed after about 800 years but trikanda shesha mentions deepali as deepavali there is also another work by one abdur rahman and this work is of the same century the 12th century and abdur rahman in his work named sandesh rasak compares the diwali lamps with the crescent moon so the same idea as we see in today's pictures or drawings now let us come to marathi literature because in maharashtra maybe uh, after ganesh utsav the longest and the greatest festival is deepavali and let us go to the 11th 12th century literature of the mahanubhavas and lila charitra the text which gives you the biography of chakravarta swami it calls for the waving of lamps ovarni and storage of a lot of water for a special bath and then preparation of sweets and other eatables special eatables which are named modak ladu ait and sev so these are the things we uh, actually cook even today 
and it is said that there was a lady named Mahadai, and she uh, waved the lamps before Chakradhar and his followers, and she gave her the uh, she, and she gave them the water to uh, have the special bath, and also she prepared these eatables for them. So this is 1250 CE. So the antiquity of Diwali in Maharashtra or in Marathi literature, it goes back to about uh, 800 years. Now there is a mention of Yamadvitiya as Bhaubis in a text named Chatur Varaka Chintamani of Himadri. And this text was composed in 1260. Now let us go to Nyaneshwari, the magnum opus. And Nyaneshwara writes, Mi avivekachi kazali pheduni viveka deepa uzali tai yogiya pahe diwali nirantar tai yogiya pahe diwali nirantar so, all prudence is gathered and imprudence is waved off and then that is Diwali. That's what Naneshwara says. There is also another very bright uh, OV of Naneshwara. Surya adhikthili prachi jaga rani vade prakashachi taisi vacha shrotaya jnanachi Diwali kari. So, just as the sun when he appears on the eastern horizon, and he gives light to the whole world. So similarly, I want to create for the audience a Diwali of knowledge. Taisi vacha shrotaya jnanachi Diwali kari. Then there is another text named Rukmini Swayamvara, which is of the 13th century. And Narendra, the author says, Ki ananda diwali eche teja, Ki akashi jyoti ce zawla ho kaza, Ki gaganasi vahale bhoja yadava pratapa ce. So, the wearer of yadava, on the one hand Krishna, and on the other hand the yadava king, ruler, so the valor of the Yadava king and the valor of Krishna is compared to the brightness of Diwali. Then there is another very important reference which comes from a text called Akasha Bhairava Kalpa and this Akasha Bhairava Kalpa dates to 1450 and for, for the first time you have a reference of fireworks. So fireworks are not ancient but they, they appeared in India sometime in 14th century and that is why they are mentioned here and there the fireworks and crackers and all they begin. And we are also aware of Saint Tukarama's Abhanga, Bheti Lagi Jiva Lagali Se Asa. And there is a mention of Diwali in that. Diwali Cha Mula Leki Asa Wali Pahata Se Vatuli Pandari Ji. So uh, Tukaram says that I am eager to meet the Lord just like a girl is eager to meet her parents while she is in her bridegroom's house, she is eager to meet her parents in Diwali. Similarly, I am eager to meet uh, Lord Victor. Diwali cha mula leki asavali pahatase vatuli pandhari chi. Professor Bode has indeed created a very good documentation and analysis of the historical and literary evidences. We have so far seen the literary evidences. Now we shall see the historical evidences 
in the next uh, chunk. We saw the course of Diwali. We saw also the literary evidence of Diwali. And now we shall see the historical evidence of Diwali as produced by Professor P.K. Gode in his articles on that festival. And his articles are published in six volumes. Three of the volumes are that of Indian literary history and the other three are that of the Indian cultural history. And these articles on Diwali appear in the second volume of the Indian cultural history. Gode tells us that it is known from an inscription which is in Kannada and that inscription dates 1119 CE that the Kalyani Chalukya ruler Trivuvana Malla he donated one Gadyana to the temple of Nileshwara Deva and this Gadyana was bent for lighting lamps on the occasion of Diwali. A very important reference. So lighting a lamp is a normal activity but there is a special donation for lighting lamps on the occasion of Diwali and it has an inscriptional evidence. A second reference is that of a Shilahara king, we don't know who, but he used to worship the Mahalakshmi of Kolhapur, of course, he is the Shilahara king of Kolhapur. So he used to worship the Mahalakshmi of Kolhapur on the occasion of Diwali. And similarly, a Gujarat king also used to worship the Mahalakshmi of Kolhapur on that day, or at least he used to uh, worship maybe a replica of Mahalakshmi of Kolhapur. And this is a reference which appears in a text named Prabandha Chintamani. And the date of this Prabandha Chintamani is 1305. Now let us go to Vijayanagar Empire. Just like our Trivona Malda, who had donated uh, for lighting lamps on the occasion of Diwali. Similarly, Sadashiva Raya, a ruler of the Vijayanagar Empire, has donated ghee for lighting lamps on the occasion of Diwali and this inscriptional evidence falls in the year 1521-1522. Now there is another very important evidence which comes uh, during the Maratha Empire and Mahadaji Shinde who was stationed at Gwalior and he wa who was looking after the affairs of the Marathas uh, in the north, he, re he reported to Savai Madhara of Peshwe that the ruler of Kota created something like Daruchi Lanka. So it was the Lanka of gunpowder on a Diwali day. And then that Lanka was systematically uh, actually blown. So it was a show of crackers, so to say. And receiving this report, Savai Madharao ordered that such a Daruchi Lanka, the Lanka of gunpowder, be created at Pune. And perhaps after the year 1790 onwards, you find that this festivity, Daruchi Lanka, had become a part of the Diwali celebrations in Pune city. Now let us also see what other historical sources have to say. Alberoni, who wrote vigorously about India in his work Discovery of India, <laughs> the name in original is Tahikik e Hind, and Tahikik e Hind, if you translate into English, becomes Discovery of India. So Alberoni's Tahikik e Hind records 
the Diwali festival and it is 1030 CE, 1030 CE and Alberone reports that there is festive dressing, exchange of betel leaves which we saw some time ago, then merry making, making, visiting temples, grand display of lights, lamps and then he also describes that Vishnu had trampled Bali but the Indian people believe that he was liberated by Lakshmi. So this is a very different dimension of that festival. Alveruni says that Bali Pratipada does not signify the trampling of Bali by Vamana but rather it signifies the liberation of Bali by Lakshmi from Vishnu. So this is a completely different dimension which Alberoni gives us and we should be thankful to Professor Gode who has recorded uh, this thing in his article. Now there is also a reference uh, to the celebration of the Diwali festival by Emperor Akbar and Ayin i Akbari the biography of Akbar which was written in 1590 it says that there was an Akasa Diya that's a Persian of course Akasa Diya that means Akasha Deepa was erected in the camp of Akbar and the pole of this Akasha Deepa Akasa Diya was 40 yards high and it was supported by 16 ropes and what was that Akasa Diya? It was actually a collection of camphor candles which actually were one yard, I am sorry, one yard in length. So that is the celebration of Diwali by Akbar and it is recorded in Ayini Akbari in 1590. Now there were several foreign foreigners who visited India during the medieval time and out of them the first person to record the Diwali festival by name Diwali which was celebrated at Vijayanagar was an Italian traveller named Nicolai Conti and his record dates 1410 CE. Then there is also Godino the Eredia who has recorded Diwali in 1613. There is the Hedges diary which is the diary of William Hedge which dates 1671 and he records Duali D U A W L Y as the feasting season and of course a medical doctor Dr. John Fryer has also referred to Diwali in 1673. Friends there is a very famous saying, it is rather a line from the Abhanga of Saint Tukaram and it says Fodile bhandara dhanyacha hamala me to hamala bharavahi. So I am just narrating this to you but the work has already been done by Professor P. K. Gode at least seven decades ago. His works are available, his works are available online also. So please go through them, the three volumes of the Indian literary history and the three volumes of Indian cultural history. Happy Diwali, Happy New Vikrama year, thank you.